it's me again. We're going to continue reading Aesop. And we're going to start off with the story, The Cheat. A poor man, being very ill and getting worse, promised the gods to sacrifice to them 100 oxen if they saved him from death. The gods, wishing to put him to the test, restored him to health very quickly. Soon he was up and out of bed. But as he didn't really have any oxen, he modeled 100 of them out of tallow and burned them on an altar, saying, Receive my votive offering, O gods. But the gods, wanting to trick him in their turn, sent him a dream, saying that if he would go to the seashore, it would result in 1,000 Athenian drachmas for him. Unable to contain his joy, he ran to the beach, where he came across some pirates who took him away and sold him into slavery. And they did indeed obtain 1,000 Athenian drachmas for him. This fable was applied to a liar. Okay, the next one is called The Man and the Lion Traveling Together. A man and a lion were traveling along together one day when they began to argue about which of them was the stronger. Just then they passed a stone statue representing a man strangling a lion. There, you see, we are stronger than you, said the man, pointing it out to the lion. But the lion smiled and replied, if lions could make statues, you would see plenty of men under the paws of lions. Many people boast of how brave and fearless they are, but when put to the test, are exposed as frauds. That one was interesting. Ooh, here's a short one. The bear and the fox. A bear once boasted to a fox that he had a great love for mankind since he made it a point never to eat a corpse. The fox replied, I wish to heaven you would mangle the dead rather than the living. This fable unmasks the covetous who live in hypocrisy and vain glory. The frogs who demanded a king. The frogs, annoyed with the anarchy in which they lived, sent a deputation to Zeus to ask him to give them a king. Zeus, seeing they were, they were but very simple creatures, threw a piece of wood into their marsh. The frogs were so alarmed by the sudden noise that they plunged into the depths of the bog. But when the piece of wood did not move, they clambered out again. They developed such a contempt for this new king that they jumped on his back and crouched there. The frogs were deeply ashamed at having such a king, so they sent a second deputation to Zeus asking him to change their monarch, for the first was too passive and did nothing. Zeus now became impatient with them and sent down a water serpent, Hydra, which seized them and ate them all up. This fable teaches us that it is better to be ruled by passive worthless men who bear no spitefulness than by productive but wicked ones. Wow, that was interesting. Okay, the ox driver and Heracles. Wow, couldn't pronounce that one. <laughs> An ox driver was bringing a wagon towards a town. The wagon fell down into a deep raven. But instead of doing anything to get it out, the ox driver stood without doing a thing and merely invoked Heracles among all the gods whom he particularly honored. Heracles appeared to him and said, put your hand to the wheels, goad the oxen, and do not invoke the gods without making some effort yourself. Otherwise, you will invoke them in vain. That's a good one. The House Ferret and Aphrodite A house ferret, having fallen in love with a handsome young man, begged Aphrodite, goddess of love, to change her into a human girl. The goddess took pity on this passion and changed her into a gracious young girl. The young man, when he saw her, fell in love with her and led her to his home. As they rested in the nuptial chamber, Thalamus, 
Aphrodite wanting to see if in changing body the house ferret had also changed in character, released a mouse in the middle of the room. The house ferret, forgetting her present condition, leapt up from the bed, chased the mouse in order to eat it. Then the indignant goddess changed her back to her former state. Bad people who change their appearance do not change their character. That's a true one. The house ferret and the file. A house ferret slipped into a blacksmith's workshop and began to lick the file that she found there. Now it happened that using her tongue thus, the blood flowed from it. But she was delighted, imagining that she had extracted something from the iron. And in the end, she lost her tongue. This fable is aimed at people who pick arguments with others, thereby doing harm to themselves. The Plowman and the Frozen Snake One winter, a plowman found a snake stiff with cold. He took pity on it, picked it up, and put it under his shirt. When the snake had warmed up again, up again against the man's chest, it reverted to its nature, struck out, and killed its benefactor. When he realized that he was dying, the man bemoaned. I well deserve it for taking pity on a wicked wretch. This fable shows that perversity of nature does not change under the influence of kindness. The wife and her drunken husband. There was a woman whose husband was a drunkard. To get the better of him and his vice, she devised a plan. She waited for the moment when her husband was so drunk that he was like a corpse. Then she heaved him up over her shoulders, carried him to the cemetery and dumped him there. When she thought he had slept it off, she went back to the cemetery and knocked on the door of the vault. Who's that at the door? The drunkard called out. It's me who comes to bring food for the dead, replied his wife mournfully. Don't bring me anything to eat, my good man. Bring me more to drink. You distress me by talking about food and not drink. The wife, beating her breast, cried out, Alas, how miserable I am. My plan has had no effect on you, my husband. For not only are you not sober, but you have become even worse. Your weakness has now become second nature to you. This fable shows that you shouldn't become habituated to a loose way of life. For there comes a time when habit forces itself upon you, whether you like it or not. All right, the woman and the hen. A widow had a hen which laid an egg every day. She imagined that if she gave the hen more barley, it would lay twice a day. So she increased the hen's ration accordingly. But the hen became fat and wasn't even capable of laying one egg a day. This fable shows that if through greed, you look for more than you have, you lose even that which you do possess. I like that one. The dolphins, the whales, and the cudgeon. Some dolphins and some whales were engaged in battle. As the fight went on and became desperate, a cudgeon poked his head above the surface of the water and tried to reconcile them. But one of the dolphins retorted, it is less humiliating for us to fight to the death between ourselves than have to have you for a mediator. Similarly, certain nobodies think they are somebody when they interfere in a public row. That's a good one too. All right, we'll read one more on this video. The stag at the spring and the lion. A stag oppressed by thirst came to a spring to drink. After having a drink, he saw the shadowy figure of himself in the water. He much admired his fine antlers, their grandeur and extent, but he was discontented with his legs, which he thought looked thin and feeble. He remained there deep in reverie when suddenly a lion sprang out at him and chased him. The stag fled rapidly and ran a great distance for the stag's advantage in his legs, whereas a lion is in his heart. 
As long as they were in open ground, the stag easily outdistanced the lion. But they entered a wooded area and the stag's antlers became entangled in the branches, bringing him to a halt so that he was caught by the lion. As he was on the point of death, the stag said, how unfortunate I am, my feet, which I had denigrated, could have saved me, whereas my antlers, on which I prided myself, have caused my death. And thus, in dangerous situations, it is often the friends whom we suspect who save us, while those on whom we rely betray us. All right, I will move on to our next video. I'm hoping you're enjoying this.